In this video, I will be painting this German Shepherd puppy. I will be painting her in a traditional style, matching the colors to my reference photo, but I will also try to keep my painting very loose and flowing. So first thing we need to do is figure out which colors we're going to use. So I'm going to look at the reference photo and try to match the colors that I see there. First of all, I will of course use yellow ochre. So let's put a little swatch here on my piece of watercolor paper. The next color I see is burnt sienna. I will definitely need that. And then I will probably need light red, which is kind of reddish brown color for warm shadows on her fur. Let's see what else. I see that she has a lot of pink in her ears, so we'll probably need a bit of opera pink. We need something for her muzzle and for her back, so that will be paints gray. And probably we'll drop some magenta in the shadows as well. And maybe some cobalt purple, maybe some ultramarine purple. We will do some shadows and maybe some background. And this is going to be our color palette. We're going to start painting wet on wet and I will start with a lighter stone with my yellow ochre. And I will immediately drop some burnt sienna into wet paint so I get nice and soft darker spots on her fur. Fur won't really have hard edges. And I will also add the darker areas on the muzzle, on the ears, with uh, paints gray. So we're kind of working all over our subject, distributing the colors, light wash, just to get us started. And you will notice since my surface is wet, I'm not painting any details. And like I said, I'm keeping my colors light, pretty diluted. So it will be easy for me to deepen something or to lighten as my painting progresses. And let's also drop in some background right away so she has something to sit on with our purples. And I think I'm going to use maybe a bit of um, new gamboge for the background. And this is my first layer, I'm going to let it dry. With the second layer, I will add some details, but again, I don't want any hard edges. The dog's forms are very natural, they're not geometric. So I'm going to soften the edges and work very loosely and in painterly style. I will deepen the shadows inside her ears and we can kind of start sculpting her muzzle. It's very dark shadows on it, so I'm using paints gray and softening and pushing the colors around on paper. And as you see, I am leaving my underwash, the first layer that I painted, visible in the lightest areas of the dog. This will be my lights, and then I will add some highlights with white gouache. I don't like using masking, so I always add little details and highlights with white gouache after I'm done. So I will continue sculpting the form. I'm slightly squinting when I look at my reference photo to see more general forms. I am imitating the fur texture a little bit with my brush, but I don't want to paint like every hair on the dog. I want this watercolor to be very loose. Thank you. 
any paint runs somewhere, we can always pick it up with a piece of paper towel, wash it off with clean water and then pick up the excess. You will see the painting is becoming more realistic and defining the forms one by one. And the most important thing here is to look at your model or to look at your reference photo and just try to paint what you see instead of inventing stuff because that's what makes the painting realistic and believable. And as I said in the beginning, I'm using three different shades of brown. It's yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and light red, because having that variety of colors and also mixing them with paints gray and mixing them with each other gives me greater variety of tone. And that's what makes painting interesting, lively, and that's what catches the viewer's eye when it's not just one color everywhere, but we have some variety. This video is sped up, but in general I'm working fairly quickly because I don't want this second layer to dry before I applied and mixed all my colors. And I like dropping colors into wet paint. That's what gives me soft shadows. So I'm working fairly quickly. Let's see just a few more details. Verify our tonal relationships. Make sure what's dark is dark enough and that we didn't lose all the lights in the process. And add some interest in the background, a little splattering, a little spraying from the bottle, and let's leave this layer to dry. All we have to do to finish this painting is add a few highlights. I'm using white gouache, and I'm also mixing it with a bit of watercolor, what we call body color. So I'm making my watercolors less transparent, and that way I can add some details to the dog, especially on the face. I'm adding highlights to the eyes, defining the eyebrows. There will be a little highlight on the nose. And for those, I don't want to use pure white, so I'm mixing it with watercolor. So at this stage, I can work on my details, show some fur on her around. I'm using small brush to add fur texture. And let me know in comments what is your preference. Do you like this loose watercolory style or do you prefer more detailed style, tighter, kind of more graphic approach? So please let me know in comments. And we're done. This is a portrait of a German Shepherd puppy painted in a realistic style with watercolors. I teach online classes. More information on tamirup.com. Let's get connected on social media where I post new art, information about new classes and videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time in Tamirup Studio.